हेलो एवरीवन हाउ आर यू ऑल होप यू ऑल डूइंग गुड वेलकम बैक टू टू डेज वीडियो क्लास ट्वेल्थ रिजल्ट वर अनाउंस्ड रिसेंटली इन इंडिया एंड लॉर्ड ऑफ दो स्टूडेंट्स आस्क मी अबाउट डीजीसी एग्जाम्स सो दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट दैट सो टू स्टार्ट विद डीजीसी स्टैंड फॉर डायरेक्टरेट जनरल ऑफ सिविल एविएशन दिस इज द गवर्नमेंट बॉडी विच लुक्स आफ्टर सिविल एविएशन इन इंडिया it conducts pilot exams and also issues licenses for pilots there are total of 6 exams which you need to give in order to get your commercial license in india five of these exams are conducted by dca and one exam is conducted by ministry of telecommunication so what are these exams to name them air navigation metrology air regulation technical general technical specific and rtr the first five are conducted by dca and the last which is rtr or what we call radio telephony restricted is conducted by ministry of telecommunication all exams are of 100 marks and for exams conducted by dca passing marks is 70 out of 100 and for rt passing marks is 50 out of 100 the 5 dc exams are all objective type or what you can call mcq type paper and they are conducted online it doesn't mean that you can take these exams online sitting at your home on a laptop there are designated centers set by dca where you go and uh, take exam on computer screens so until last year dca conducted exams every 3 months or we can say four attempts a year but in october 2021 they introduced another thing which is called on demand exam so along with the normal attempts which they conduct every 3 months now you can take the same exams every month which means if you are prepared for an exam you don't need to wait for 3 months time you can take the exam the very next month and along with this there are two things that are different from the normal routine of exams for on demand exams if you fail one of the attempts you cannot take the same exams for a period of 40 to 45 days and other thing is fee for regular attempts is 2500 however fees for on demand exam is 5000 and lot of students also asked me that how much we need to score in class 12th what's the minimum percentage we need to score in class 12th in order to be eligible to write these dgc exams so there's no minimum requirement which means you can even take these exams if you have 33% in your class 12th but as you go ahead with your training and job so different flying schools and airlines have their own measure set so some airline might hire you only if you have 60% marks in class 12 some flying schools might give you admission only if you have let's say 50 55% marks in your class 12 so it depends from airline to airline from flying school to flying school so before attempting the dc exams make sure you have this in mind so now i'll brief you with all the six exams what you can expect to study and uh, what questions you can see in the exams so to start with air navigation as the name itself suggest you need to navigate through air as a pilot you will navigate your plane through air so how you will do that so navigation also have three different parts first one is general navigation then instrument navigation and at last radio navigation in general navigation you will study about earth's longitudes latitudes what will be the shortest distance for two points how can you fly from point a to point b on a constant heading and stuff like that so it is basically an introduction to navigation after that when you are done with the earthly things when you know well about different charts and different measurements now you will come across instrument navigation and as the name suggest again what instruments you will use while you navigate through air so what are function of different instruments what are the principle of working so instrument navigation is all about the instruments in the cockpit and how they work and the last one is radio navigation okay so while flying pilots communicate with atc and with other traffic on specific frequencies how you will communicate with them on what frequencies you will communicate with them what is short wave communication and long wave communication different frequency bands which frequency band you will use or what frequency bands are used by different instruments or different radio systems 
so radio navigation is all about that and it comprises of 100 questions each question is of one mark and exam is for three hours you need to mark at least 70 right questions in order to clear your navigation exam moving on to metrology metrology is the study of atmosphere this is one very important thing because pilots need to be well aware about the weather they will be flying so in this subject you will study about different phenomena that takes place in atmosphere what kind of rain are there what kinds of clouds are there what weather is associated with different kind of clouds what kind of weather will be associated with different pressure areas how will the winds behave in the mountains so metrology will be all about atmosphere like not as detailed as a metrologist reads it but yes you will get a thorough knowledge of everything and this exam comprises of 50 questions each question is of two marks you need to mark at least 35 questions right in order to clear your met exam moving on to air regulation as there are traffic rules on ground there are certain traffic rules you need to follow while you fly you can't just fly anywhere and uh, anytime you want there are certain restrictions and guidelines you need to follow and fly according to them if you don't do that you might face serious consequences because it can compromise with safety of other planes flying around and your safety as well so in worst case you can even lose your pilot license so this is another important subject for a pilot so to give you an example let's say these two planes somehow came face to face with each other in order to avoid the collision what they need to do so according to the rules both of them need to divert their heading towards right or they need to turn towards right and dodge each other or let's say both of them converge or are not converge are going to converge at same point so which one of them has right of way so one at the right like this is right of this little Cessna so this one will have the right of way and this one has to turn or to give you another example which aircraft will have right of way I'm using the word aircraft it's not similar to airplane this is an aircraft with engines it is powered with engines however there are gliders gliders are also aircraft but they don't have an engine so which aircraft has right of way over another this exam also has 50 questions you need to mark 35 questions at least 35 questions right in order to clear your regulation exam moving forward towards technical general in this subject you will get to study about structure of the aircraft how the engine of the aircraft works and uh, how different systems along with the engine works in order to fly the plane i am again repeating you won't read everything in detail but thorough knowledge of all the systems this exam is also 100 marks and it comprises of 100 questions and you need to get 70 right just as navigation to clear this exam now moving on to technical specific so for technical specific now you will be taking exam for a specific model let's say this Cessna 172M. Now you will be taking specific exam for this model in which you need to be aware about what engine this plane is using. What kind of propeller do 172 have? What kind of flaps does this 172 have? What kind of landing gears do this plane have? So for flaps are uh, the single floated flap. Motor force flaps is in right wing or in left wing. So everything about this particular aircraft. So that exam is also of uh, 100 marks, 100 questions, you need to get 70 right again and time period is 3 hours. The last one we are on RTR or Radio Telephony Restricted. So this is one exam that most of the students find hard to crack. Like in last one year after I came here in Canada, I have talked to a lot of my friends who are doing their training in India and what I have heard from most of them is that they didn't clear this exam in first go. They cleared it in second, third or fourth attempt but yes, it took time and that's completely fine. You don't need to rush because yes, this exam is a bit hard and you need to be a little more sensitive towards this exam. How is this exam so hard? What do they ask in this exam? So this exam comprises of two parts. First one is the written exam and if you clear this written part, 
you will move to part 2 of the exam. So what do they ask in the written exam? So you'll get 4 or 5 different situations which a pilot faces or can face during flying. Examiner will be sitting behind you. He will be acting as an ATC or air traffic controller or some traffic as well. So he'll give you some real life situations. You need to answer him as a pilot. So you will be marked for that. What phraseology you will use if you have used the right steps in giving a call and everything about that. So this is what you can expect in the first part or the written exam. You need to score 50 out of 100 in this part and you will be promoted to part 2. In part 2 there will be two people sitting, one from Ministry of Telecommunication, other from DECA. So these two officials will ask you different questions related to radio systems or about the aircraft. There's a lot of things to study for RT for written part as well as for oral and for part 2 passing marks are 50 as well so you need to score 50 out of 100 and you will pass your RT exam this is all about the DEC exams I have told everything in short however I'll make separate videos on each subject and how you need to study for them what you need to study for them what you don't need to study for them everything about it so lot of videos coming one after another just keep watching the flying rig thank you